to make it to Olympics, you don't mm-hmm. just go to the Olympics. You don't just say, "Oh, I'm I'm gonna go to the Olympics." You gotta go to the to the world qualifiers. That's when you gotta fight everybody in the world to yeah. get a spot. That's, I wonder if, and that's I don't think a lot of people know that. Like there are so many qualifiers, yeah, tournaments to yeah, get to the Olympics. Exactly. So it's not like you just, oh, okay, mm-hmm. America wants you on Olympic team here. Like yeah. You have to, have to go. Um, Sh- Shakur, I was telling Shakur like I'm ready to turn professional after the Golden Glove. Uh, Nationals, I fought a fight mm-hmm. out here, Virgil Ortiz. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you heard of yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, no, He's Virgil. from Texas. Yeah. Virgil Ortiz, and I got robbed the fight, and I'm like, man, I'm turning pro. It is, it is, it's, it's, I ain't doing this for free no more. She calls like, just stay. It was, like, in May. She calls like, just stay. Like, you, you trust me, like, you're going to make it to Olympics. Like, mm-hmm. you like you super nice. But I didn't um never fought out of, like, overseas. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I only fought, like, in the nationals. So in I'm the like, country, in yeah. A, so I'm like, am I ready for that level? Mm-hmm. Like, Fighting overseas, mm-hmm. so um, as, as a lady named Julie Goldsticker, she works with Andre Berta, so she reached out to Andre Berta like, "Yo, is this young talent? Like, he's really good. He's Haitian. I think he can qualify and make it for the Olympic team." So he paid for my flight to the qualifier in um, Russia. Mm. We went to Russia. I had to fight Europe, Brazil, Cuba. Um, so how, how many times England. did you have to fight? I fought seven times. Seven times. Seven okay. countries back to back. Yeah. Um, and I qualified my way to Olympics. Yeah. When I got there, I'm like, damn, like, I'm really this good. Like, I'm beat, <laughs> I'm beating Japan. But you know the crazy thing, I shocked IEBA Boxing. That's the World Like Amateur Boxing yeah. um, Association. I shocked them because it's like, who's this Haitian kid that's beating all these top countries? Yeah, out of nowhere. Because Haiti don't have talent. You know, you never heard of a Haitian yeah. boxer like being really good. But they know I was from America. Mm-hmm. They just thought I was coming from Haiti. So it was like, whoa, like this, kid, this Haitian kid is. Like different, like he's, yeah. he really can fight. So I think it was better for me to go. It, it was God's plans to make it for Haiti because you know, like I said, bring a lot of attention attention to me because I was like the star player mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on the on the team. Yeah. Okay. So you you went you you know you qualify in Russia. Yes. Okay. And then is that what gives you like the green light for the Olympics? Yeah. You get you once you win all your fights in Russia, you yeah. qualify. So you fight. It was all every country there. Was Jamaica, uh, Barbados, every type of country there. Like, yeah. well, which countries like like gave you like the the most work? Like which? Um. England. England. England was the the best, the most. England, oh. and Cuba was the most skilled fighters. That yeah, I, I heard Cuba, Cuba, like they're like they're they're like the kings when it comes to amateur, amateur boxing. boxing. Yeah, the, the Cuba, and England was like my tough. But you know what's crazy though? I heard I also heard that they don't, <coughs> they're not allowed to go pro, which is no. kind of which yeah, is kind of messed up. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's effed up for sure. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, because uh, 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 Castro, I was yeah. I was looking into it. Like he, like he regards pro- professional boxing as corrupt. And like, like you know, he 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 like, and he, he made it illegal to go pro. And like you know, he, he wants he wants his fighters, Cubans to, to fight for their country and not for money. Yeah, you know, I think and he's for the honor, huh? Honor, or something. the honor, right, right, right. And like, if uh, like the, and then and then so that's why that's why like a lot of Cuban boxers have to defect. Yeah. Which is which is very sad, man, because a lot of them don't make it. They die on the way. Yeah, like they go on they go on boats, yeah. you know. They life be on a risk. They go to jail if they get caught. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, like I know, like some of the ones that did make it successfully, and uh, uh Gamboa, Gamboa, R- Rigandal. You got Ugas now. Ugas. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's uh that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cause cause they cause like you know like and cause like like we just said like when it comes to amateurs they're like the they're like I'm not do they have the the most medals? Yeah. Okay. Cuba, Cuba's definitely. I think they got the most medals. Right? Mm-hmm. They always medal in the Olympics. Always. Yeah. Their, their team be like, it just be like a hundred all. It's like they got the all star team. Yeah. Cuba, like literally every fighter on that team can fight. Yeah, yeah, man. They they really uh like they really mastered that the, the, the amateur style and yeah. the science. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You ever you ever fought a Cuban? No, nah, I box a lot of Cuban. I box um, I box okay. a lot of Cubans. Mm-hmm. And like when you go to like. The Olympics and stuff, like you'll have um, sparring sessions mm-hmm. with different countries, like Cuba and America will be sparring. So you get to box some of the some of the Cubans yeah. right before the Olympics. You know, it's the same thing as fighting them. So uh-huh. I got to box. I'm like, damn, they like really, really good. And you yeah. know, I was I was young when I went to the Olympics. I was 18. Mm-hmm. I was probably one of the. It was me, Charles Conwell, Shakur, 
I think we were like the youngest people in the Olympics because mm-hmm. you know a lot of people stay. They'll lose. They'll lose. They'll lose. Um, they don't qualify to, for the Olympics when they're like eighteen, but they'll try again when they're like twenty three, twenty four. So a lot of people in the Olympics be like way older, like yeah. Cubans. Every four years, yeah. yeah, Cubans they be like thirty years old fighting eighteen year old kids from oh. America. So that's why they be so advanced. Yeah, what's the what's the age limit? Is there is there like an age limit? I think thirty five. Thirty five. Yeah. Damn, so they be like grown men who's who 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 who've done it, like who've been doing it for years, yeah, fighting eighteen year olds, right? Hey, okay. Yeah, so you know, like Floyd Mayweather, he was eighteen years old in Olympics, and yeah. he was a young talent, like. So it's yeah. like he got the silver. Yeah, he got the sil- yeah he got the no, he got the bronze. The bronze. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. He, got, he bronze. got the bronze. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think he lost to like a, a, a Bulgarian or something. Yeah. Or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Stevenson Stevenson got the the silver. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. And he lost to a, a, a Cuban. Cuban, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that Cuban had the gold in the 2012 Olympics. Oh. So they, that's what I'm saying. They got so much experience. When you go over there, you'd be like, yeah. they advance. Yeah. It's like young kids that would come from fighting the Nationals. Yeah. And we go to the Olympics, it's like we really reti- relying on our talent to compete yeah. with these people. Yeah, it's different. Now, like, I was having a conversation with one of, one of my uh, my friends, like, in, in the who boxes. And we were talking about, like, like, like is like oh in your opinion like is is amateur boxing in the Olympics like in terms of competition is it greater than the pros do you feel like yes yeah I think amateur boxing is is eighty percent harder than the pros tell you mm. why because in the pros you can pick your opponents you can hit and yeah. your promoters and promoters promoters like have a way of you know we're gonna fight you can fight one style. Mm-hmm. Like I'm gonna fight this style only. This is the style that I know I can beat. Mm-hmm. I know this is not gonna give me too much problems. When in the amateur boxing, you have to fight whatever style comes up in you that ring. You got a choice. You don't have no choice but to fight. Yeah, it's you really have, the best fighting the best. Yes, every time. Like you can yeah. fight the best every single day. And yeah. pros, you can hand pick your opponent. Out. I can call Floyd right now and say, "All right, we're gonna do this," but or I or I would do this, but mm-hmm. you know. You can like you can kind of like negotiate that yeah. like you can you can you can talk you can talk about it uh, uh you know opposed to the amateurs right the, the Olympics it's it's different unless and the pros only how like I feel like you will get cornered if you have the world title and it's like you're my number one mandatory for the title mm-hmm. and the the belt the organ on the organization belt that I have is man, mandating this fight mm-hmm. so it's like it's either I'm gonna give this give this up and look like a coward for the world or defend it or defend it yeah yeah okay yeah yeah those are the exceptions right. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, and like as someone who you and, know, who, and, go ahead, go ahead. And even with that, you gotta understand, fighters still get step aside money. So you could be my number one mandatory, and my promoter could be like, "Yo, me and me and Errol Spence is a bigger fight than me and you, even though you're my number one mandatory, and mm-hmm. the, and you feel like you could beat me." Yeah. But me and Ugas is gonna bring the most money, the so most, the most buys. We'll pay you. Five hundred thousand. Step to the side. And let me. Let's make this fight. Oh, and that way, and 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 that way, you can keep the belt. Yeah, I keep the belt, and I have to fight you. Yeah, you don't have to fight me. You just stay number one mandatory. Uh, but you have some some step aside money. Really? Yeah. So. Oh, I thought like I thought like the belts kind of like no, nah. like the people, like the organizations, the WBO. Oh, it's, so it's, there's hey. a lot of politics yeah, in, in exactly. the day, in, in it, ain't it? Okay, like in 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 like uh on 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 the Olympics, um. Let me see. I wanted to ask you. Uh, let me see. Like, like for people who don't know, like casual boxing fans, like, like uh, aside from winning a medal, like, what are some of the benefits of, of winning the Olympics, or, or, or you know, or even coming in second or third? Like, you know, um, it's. I think that's like, it's just because, because to my understanding, it like, uh, it raises your stock as a boxer, yeah. especially ones going into the pros, yes. right? That's that was like that was like the main thing for me. I think the Olympics. Even though I didn't get get the medal, mm-hmm. it it raised my stock. Like when I come in, coming into like the pros, it was like all right. He's like once you got like an Olympian, that's something that stick with you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like you got scouts yeah, out you, there, right? Yeah, you already have like you don't have to say contracts. Too much. Yeah, yeah, people he's with an contracts. Olympian. All right, I'm gonna give him this. Mm-hmm. And when you get a medal, that's like all right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's why. That's why it's 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 uh it's very special. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Now, as someone who uh, so so my sister she's she is competing for the uh, uh 2024 Olympics. Uh she's actually on her way to Colombia right now uh, uh I think like for a qualifier. Yeah. Um and you know she's a 10-time national champion, international champion. Um as someone who who knows what it takes and who's been there, what advice would you give like to, to you know someone like her? Get as much experience as you can. I think I think like her best uh 
her best plan should be getting on a team, on the USA team, to mm-hmm. even get some of that uh, experience overseas. So when she, mm-hmm. it is time to qualify for Olympics, and then and then do and then go fight these different countries, she already see what she have to go up against. Mm-hmm. She knows what to expect. Yeah. I think she she should just uh like I said get the most experience. That was like my biggest thing getting mm-hmm. the most experience in the nationals fighting like the best competition in the nationals and and all over um the nation mm-hmm. just fighting Texas fighting ver- fighters like Virgil Ortiz fighting fighters like Boots Ennis mm-hmm. fighting fighters like Gary Russell Jr. It mm-hmm. was I was just getting experience. So even though I didn't ever fought overseas, I was so I fought so much high level fights where it's like I was ready to compete. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, okay. That's some good advice. And real quick, I want to shout my sister out, my youngest sister, Jury Rodriguez. Y'all be sure to go and follow her. She's she's next up for, sh- for sure.